The next stage of formation for me is what's called a novice. I will be shipped to another friary in another part of the country, and I will be invested in the habit of St. Francis. So this will be my first year as a true official friar for the Capuchin order. After a year as a novice, I come back to my home province here in the Midwest, and I get to take my vows. I profess vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. And I am so blessed, and I thank God every day for this noble calling he has given me. And although I feel unworthy of such a calling, I am so very thankful. God has been very good to me. Now perpetually professed for life, the maturity of Brother MJ's vocation is measured not only in the formation programs he has successfully Open completed, more. but the personal growth that has moved him from his pre-Capuchin personal crisis to become a competent minister in the Catholic Church. When I look back at the first film, it's, it's shocking, it's, uh, it's amazing, it's still very moving. Um, but what it speaks to me is of God's grace working in my life. It shows a young man uh, seven, eight years ago who was very raw and zealous and idealistic and excited. Time to go. Mm -hmm. Looking at that video, it, it appeared that MJ was just fine and healthy and recovered at that point, and he was, but. As a mom, I was still sitting on the edge of my seat, afraid of a relapse. It's yeah. a big boy. Taking care of Christ's support in many, many different ways. You know, when this was being filmed, <clears throat> I wasn't at that point where I was completely comfortable yeah. in you being well. And now, all these years later, we have never had that relapse, and I'm no longer sitting on the edge of the chair, so to speak. I have faith in his recovery. Yeah. You sure look different now. Yeah. <laughs> you do. Yeah, me too. I think it's miraculous. The reason he was delivered from that, I truly believe, is so that he can relate and people can relate to him uh, on these things that are going on in our society and he can help them. Founded in 1528. The word Capuchin comes from the Italian Capuccio and refers to the order's hood inhabits. This order would become the destination for MJ, who recalls his journey. Luckily, my dad had built a very fruitful career in the photography industry. I was I coming off of a very strong conversion experience, and that's great. And that film has touched a lot of lives, and it still touches my life. Um, but when I look at it now, you know, it's, it's like looking at a, a more immature version of me, you know. And that's, that's exactly what formation has done for me over the last seven, eight years. It's really allowed me to uh, develop myself and my skills and my talents and my abilities to serve this brotherhood in the best possible way. With his initial Capuchin formation complete, Brother MJ continues his formal education. Hi sister, how are you? Good to How see are you. you? Good to see you. Thank you for meeting me on my paper. Yes, I need your help. Very well. So let's go talk. Let's go talk. Right. When I joined the Capuchin oh, Friars, uh, I had a high school diploma. And so I was out of the classroom and into the workforce for a long time. And so I came to the Capuchins with little to no education. Let me show you what I've written so far. Joy of the Gospel. Yes. Thanks be to God, the Capuchins are one of the few religious orders uh, that is sympathetic towards people that don't already have an undergrad degree, uh, which I didn't. And so uh, the last four years um, have been in the classroom for me, which was a hard transition, you know, being an older guy. Uh, and What do you glean from that? What, what did you... Having completed his bachelor's degree, Brother MJ now studies pastoral theology, leading to priesthood at Catholic Theological Union in Chicago. Chicago is where the Capuchin Formation Program is located, providing excellent educational options at area colleges and universities. So before you, you come at people with doctrine and dogma right off the bat, the arrowhead should be the beautiful 
uh, expression of those doctrines and dogmas. So Pursuing a degree in philosophy and anthropology, and uh, it's been very exciting. And again, every day that I'm able to go to school is a gift because someone has worked hard for that money and a benefactor has gifted it to us so that I can have an education you know, and a chance to be a competent minister in this world. The Capuchins believe strongly in education for the friars to help them grow spiritually and emotionally. Every day for the last four years, I, I work my butt off, you know, uh, studying and writing papers. And um, it's been hard, but it's been the greatest struggle of my life, you know, is, is understanding how great a gift education is and how lucky I am to have that gift when so many people don't, don't have that opportunity. I did very well with my undergrad and I got my philosophy degree and very shortly I'll be starting my theological studies at Catholic Theological Union in Chicago. Brother MJ is already a Capuchin brother and hopes to also be a Catholic priest. Being a brother is always the fundamental vocation of every Capuchin. My initial call, uh, I believed and I discerned, was to be a Catholic priest. But as I've progressed throughout the years in initial formation with the Capuchins and really having a more mature and better understanding of St. Francis of Assisi and what his intent was and what he started so long ago, um, I believe that Francis thoroughly wanted an order of lesser brothers and that radically changed the way I approach my vocation. I understand this call. And my primary call is to be a brother in this world and particularly as a Capuchin friar. So when I took my solemn vows last summer, I laid down my life for this brotherhood and I, I promised uh, to live the rest of my life in poverty, chastity, and obedience as a Capuchin friar. And, and for me, that's the, really the height of this vocation. And, you know, I made it. <laughs> Thanks be to God, I did it. And um, it was amazing. El de Cristo. Capuchins reach out to the people at the margins. This morning, Brother MJ is ministering at a largely Hispanic and African-American neighborhood on Chicago's south side. Loving God, we thank you for this beautiful day for these friends, for this church, for this community. We ask you to bless this meal and this time together as we uh, learn more about each other's lives and share in fellowship. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you. No. Come on, Luz. A friar experiences the cultures of the people he serves. Latino, African American, Vietnamese, Native American and other Catholics and peoples. Hospitality is a key value of the Capuchins. The friar's role is to immerse and serve, to provide a setting where all feel safe and welcomed. Brother MJ began his Capuchin postulancy with ministry at Milwaukee's Capuchin Community Services House of Peace location. This Capuchin ministry serves chronically poor and working poor families, providing food, clothing and spiritual nourishment. The Capuchins um, are a great organization. They were the first religious order when I was discerning uh, that asked me what are my gifts and how can I help this group uh, become better sharers of the gospel in the world, you know, which was unique. Uh, rather than telling me, hey, if you join us, you're going to do this ministry or do this ministry. They said, hey, we, we serve the poor and we live the gospel. And that's exciting. Brother MJ. He returns often to this central city ministry to renew the bonds he made with staff and guests. Yeah, right by downtown, by the loop. We raised the born all my life there. Excellent. All right. Stock, All right, stock up. Yes. Thanks talking to you. Yes, sir. You too. Pray for me, will you? Yeah, you pray for me too. I need it. You I got need it. it. You got it. All right. You, you folks finding everything okay? Oh, you doing all right? Mm -hmm. All right. Good. We can fold. Yeah. How you doing today? Hi. How are you? Man, I'm so good. Good. I'm so great, good. Great. It's not snowing anymore. So. <laughs>
I started at St. Ben's Clinic, but now I'm retired and I work mostly with veterans. But I was born and raised three blocks from here, so it's special. The Capuchins Social Services Ministries strive to meet the poor's basic needs bringing to life the corporal works of mercy. These works of mercy are found in the teachings of Jesus and give us a model for how we should treat all others, as if those we serve were Christ in disguise. The friars work side by side with volunteers, promoting sister and brotherhood, just as Christ did, just as St. Francis did. Uh, but you know, right now my main focus is becoming a competent minister, right? You know, I'm in school forever. Let's see what we got. We got big. We got big. Man, these are nice shirts too. Dang, these are... Our job as Capuchins has been to really build relationship with people, encounter people, meet them right where they're at on this journey of life, and just let them know that they're not alone, that they're loved, um, that they're valuable, that they're beautiful. Large. So I've experienced that everywhere I've been sent, whether it's Detroit, Milwaukee, here in Chicago, uh, on the Indian reservations in Montana. I mean, you encounter the same issues, drug abuse, neglect, economic poverty, no jobs, depression. I mean, it's the same elements, um, just different faces. As Franciscans, the friars live and work with those who are in need of help. The poor, the disenfranchised, the needy. The brothers serve God through the work they do, in the communities they serve. The friars provide hope to those communities. Two cans of corn. Two cans of corn, I gotta get some green beans. One can of yam. One can of yam. Two Jiffy Mix. You get a box of cake mix? I got cake. Okay, they get boxed mashed potatoes. Uh, got macaroni cheese. No, ma'am, not yet. I got one here. All right. The Capuchin friar is changed as much as he helps. Following in the footsteps of Francis, it is important for the friars to be a part of the lives of the people they work with. They want to be a brother to all who enter their ministries. Our job isn't to uh, solve the problem. You know, the poor will always be with us. We know this. But uh, our job is to simply encounter them, uh, into their lives, build relationship with them, and let them know that they're not alone. How you doing? My name is Brother MJ. Jeff. Jeff, nice to meet you. You live here in the area? Yeah. Go walk your whole life? Uh, no. No? Have around? Mostly. Thanks for being here. My name's Brother MJ. Thank you all for being here tonight. Brother MJ readily shares with guests that he is in recovery. His past drug addiction contributes to MJ's spontaneous ability to minister to others today, always aware that he and the other are all brothers and sisters. You always been from Milwaukee? No, I'm from the town in Michigan. Okay. Well, they say a geographical change. <laughs> right. Uh, it didn't change too much. It started off because I was still drinking. I went along, went along, went along and trying to drink. And I, then I realized that it was a drink that it kept me down. I stayed in the treatment center for a year and a half. Right. And I, I didn't start counting until I, after I got out of there. Sure. It's hard. You know, it's hard. It is hard. You it's know, a minute by minute struggle, isn't it? My sponsor told me, he said, as long as you stay sober, it's hard as it is. Yeah. I have no excuses. Twelve, the 12 step program saved my life, you know, and like like you said, a geographical change. You know, they, what do they tell you? Change people, places, and things. Yeah. You know, you I have to. Get to leave out some friends. You gotta, you've gotta cut those ties, and it's hard, right? But you gotta, you gotta get out. Hey, can we say a quick prayer, just the three of us real quick? And I want you guys to pray for my sobriety and my vocation as well, too. Okay? So we're going to ask, Heavenly Father, I ask you to bless these two men, these two servants of God. Uh, keep them absolutely safe and sober this night. Uh, give them another day and ask them to be beacons of hope, light, peace, and sobriety to the rest of the world and everyone they encounter. Through Christ our Lord, amen. God bless you guys. All right, keep me in prayer. I need it.
Beautiful. Right. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. How about one of those? That looks a little baby like. Thank you. How about a tray? How's that look, little one? Little angel. <laughs> and I. I had to guess. So I the friars focus on the gospel and those who have been forgotten. Capuchins have always gone where few others wish to go. Brother MJ's first ministry experiences as a postulant have matured into confident partnering with those on the periphery. So whatever we can offer you or do for you in this immediate moment, great. Uh, but rest assured, I will definitely pray for you. You know, and I hope you pray for me. You know, and that's something that I always ask of them is that they pray for me because I feel like they're probably closer to Jesus than I am sometimes. So, you know, I, I ask the poor to always uh, extend a blessing over me and all of my Capuchin brothers so that we can be uh, the best ministers that we can possibly be. Brother MJ serves the Port Ministry, which provides food, health care, and support to Chicago's South Side. Here, he and a Port volunteer ready the bread truck, which will travel back in the yards, providing food to the hungry. When I came into the order uh, a long time ago, I, I think I had these ideas of what Capuchins were about. It's a nice day. Oh, it's nice out today, man. I have a more balanced understanding of not only myself, uh, what makes me tick, my ego, uh, my mind, my heart, my soul, um, but also how the church as a whole is, is really um, just this plethora of, of human beings and this diversity. The food is donated by parishes, partners, and corporations. How you doing, gentlemen? How you doing? Just give it out one. Nah, you got any juice in there? Nah, it's all fine. No nah, snacks? I mean, no, seven. Top seven? Yeah. Okay. Have a good all day, guys. Right. Thank you. God bless right. you. Good morning, gentlemen. No baloney. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank, you. Thank you. God bless you. Apple, yeah. apple to orange. This is the thing. Oh, man. God bless you. <laughs> Sandwiches. Capuchin formation is an opportunity to develop spiritually and emotionally. The process is layered, where the friar keeps peeling until the core Capuchin values are revealed. And so a more mature version of myself sits here today. So a more uh, balanced, well-developed individual in all aspects of my life. And that's what the gift that the Capuchins have given me in formations. Perfect weather. I get to come home every night to a house full of brothers that are my support system. Uh, they are the the joy of my life, really. I mean, you know, it's it's amazing how once you, you're properly formed and you understand this life and this gift that we have in fraternity uh, and communion with one another, what a source of power and hope and, um, and love that can be. Fraternity was just a word when MJ joined the Capuchin Postulancy. Now it's a lived value to which he contributes and from which he gets his support. Most importantly, fraternity is a way of life with other Capuchins and with everyone involved in his ministry. You know, everything we do within the walls of our houses uh, gives us that light and that power and then we take that out into the world. So when we've had a particularly tough day, we're not going home alone to just dwell on it and let that weigh on us. You know, we can express that to our brothers, be vulnerable to each other and share that cry on each other's shoulders, you know, and just like pass that off, you know? It's like we're in this, this together. And, uh, and that makes this uh, immensely easier. <laughs> Chicago allows the Capuchin Friars in formation many opportunities. The friars are on the south side. Evening meals are often times of cooking together. It's a time to gather, share the day's activities, and unwind as brothers, as family. Cooking for 15 people. Pretty average night. Pretty average group. 
Yeah. Trin, what time did they call you? Around two. Around two o'clock? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's about what time they called me. I was about two, three o'clock in the afternoon when I got Brother there. MJ remembers the phone call he received six years ago accepting him into postulancy. His blossoming enthusiasm is reflected in every young man who receives the same call. Since then, his understanding of what St. Francis of Assisi means to our world and church has matured, deepened and refined. When I first heard about this guy, Francis of Assisi, I understood that he created this movement and I knew that it consisted of brothers I didn't quite understand what that meant until I entered a Capuchin friary for the first time. And over the last seven or eight years, um, that has been the single biggest gift that God has given me is this fraternity. And realizing how absolutely important it is uh, for us to create uh, fraternity, brotherhood within our own walls, but sister brotherhood for the yes, wider world. Yes, sir. When I entered the order, I had zero cooking abilities, skills, uh, desire. Luckily, I'm able to team up with guys like Trung who are actually competent in the kitchen and know flavors and recipes and have done this a lot. And so uh, I mirror them and I just work with them and learn from them. And uh, slowly but surely I can make something that's halfway edible. We find that a lot of the stuff we do in the kitchen uh, whether it's preparing the meals, cooking, is a big source of community for us. It's a, it's a way that we uh, really learn to live together as brothers, teach each other, learn from each other, and share our lives. So the kitchen is a very important part of our life. The, uh, the atmosphere is really, really uh, vibrant. And I didn't expect it to be, you know, this kind of vibrant because I always thought that, you know, oh, prison is really boring, you have to live alone. But the Capuchin or the Franciscan family is very different. We live as a, in a brotherhood type, so which is uh, which the main thing that really got me into wanting to become a Capuchin. We all have different gifts, abilities, talents, and that's what we bring, you know, to this community. So, you know, Trung's a great example. He knows how to cook. He's very good with time management, and uh, a lot of these things I'm not so good at. So, uh, it's a way for us to really learn from each other and um, and grow together and teach each other, and uh, it's a it's a really cool experience. <laughs> Good. Looks beautiful. The fact that we make it an absolute priority to be brothers and to come together um, is, is almost strange, uh, but it's so beautiful. And I believe that that is the single biggest thing we can offer to the world today. We are created to be in communion with one another, to be in relationship, and we do that very well. And that was something I had a slight idea of about the Franciscan movement, but I had no idea how intentional and how beautiful it is until I actually join the Capuchin Friday. Many applicants into religious life worry that they will lose their families upon entry. But in fact, Brother MJ has deepened his blood family ties while gaining a wider family through his Franciscan ministry and way of life. I know that he is already touching and helping so many people. He will continue to help many, many people. And that's why he joined the Capuchin Order, because of who they minister to. They minister to the poor and the homeless and the addicted and the imprisoned and the sick. And he was all of those things. His entire being is to be there for others, and he's, he's dedicated to that. The Capuchins are dedicated to that. He does that because he's been there. He's walked that path. He understands where those people are coming from.
my whole family is Catholic. And it's not only uh, MJ's conversion, but it's our conversion as well. And it, it is such a blessing and such a joy. Today, Brother MJ is joining his family on the joyous baptism of his brothers and his sister-in-law's baby. Coming up for the baptism. Let's show you the video. Oh, look at how beautiful he is. It's having to cry. Oh. This experience that we have been fortunate enough to come out on the other side with a healthy child has allowed us to be grateful to God, not for the experience, but for bringing him through. So it's at least this one, three during the elevations, and then one. We just you know, pray that we can continue going deeper in our faith and we can continue to help others. We really do see that as what we're called to do is to, we, we are able to, and so we are, we must do it. As a postulant, novice and temporary professed capuchin, Brother MJ gradually acquired more liturgical skills. In these final years of his ministry preparation, he will further develop his preaching, prayer and community leadership skills. ended up with the Capuchins, I mean, they have been nothing but the greatest thing in the world for him. I think it's an answer from above uh, that Peace saved his life. With you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ. You know, we just continue to pray that uh, God's will be done, uh, whether that's to be a priest as he discerns it, or if it's to stay right where he is as a brother, continue his education. and help as many people as he possibly can to use these experiences that that he's been through in the best possible way to save as many souls as possible every candidate into religious life wonders about his ability to live a healthy celibate life Capuchin formation helps men to learn whether they have the gift of celibacy and, if so, how to mature in that gift. Vows also include living a life of poverty and obedience. As the friars grow in their spirituality, the followings of St. Francis becomes clearer. There's your on-call. In the end, Capuchin Franciscan fraternity is the core of Brother MJ's life. It was present in the initial impulse that led him to reach out and become a Capuchin postulant. It matured through novitiate and temporary vows as he gathered more experiences both inside and outside the friary. My first call is to be a brother, and to be a little brother, and to be a Capuchin brother, and that's amazing, because that, that changes everything. And so when I was able to profess my solemn vows last year, that was the pinnacle for me. I peaked. I mean, that was absolutely the height of my vocation as a Capuchin. I laid down my life um, for this brotherhood, and I said, I, I will, I will be a brother for the rest of my life, and that's amazing. Um, I still feel called to be a priest, and that will come, you know, God willing, with time and study. Um, but my first call is to be a Capuchin friar, and, and God has given me that gift, and, and I responded to it wholeheartedly. Now, a lifelong, perpetually professed Capuchin, Brother MJ completely embraces his fraternity 
and looks forward to completing his professional training to be the minister he can be in our world and church.